Good morning, everybody. Uh, I know most of you, some better than others, but it's a privilege to be here. And about three or four months ago, Bishop asked me if I'd uh, stand up here with Brother Nathaniel and give a testimony. My testimony is, is what God's done in my life. Um, he's changed a lot of things in my life for the better. Um, before I came here, I, I was um, I was just torn. Um, a lot of things that happened in my life. I'd, I had cancer. I, I lost my job as a letter carrier working for the post office. I get divorced. You know, it was one thing after another, and I just thought God was just just laying down on me, and I, um, I grew up Catholic. I tried going back to church, and um, I, I did one thing I didn't do, which was pray. That's what I've learned here. It's funny, Brother Nathaniel was one of my first leaders here. <clears throat> he baptized me. He over, oversaw that. <clears throat> And um, um, he was so kind, and and his prayer groups were like, you know, really moving. And the people there, we would pray, and uh, you know, I just feel things that I never felt before. I, I know it was God. I know it was um, of Him touching all of us present. And we would we would worship and and give him praise and everything, and it was just it was just a good time. It was um, and and it it started, you know, I I knew it was inside of me now. I didn't know. I always thought God was outside of me. You know, I'm an artist. I paint and draw and stuff like that. And, you know, I always thought of Michelangelo, Sistine Chapel. You know, that angry God there and um, that unapproachable God. And and I. You know, I've read a lot about religion and um, and how how others see God, but nobody sees God like like we see God. And I don't know. I've been watching some things lately, Amen. And um, you know, talking about the Pentecostal faith. Now, this is a religious um, heritage going on here. Even in this building right here, we have people that are first generation, second generation, third generation. And, you know, it goes all the way back to Pentecost. And, um, you know, God is, is uh, opening up doors and, and changing lives. He changed me from a, you know, a, a drug addict, um, a sex addict, uh, a food addict, you name it. I was addicted to it. I was, I wanted to be nice and comfortable sitting in my pew. When I went to church, it was, you know, um, I felt like I was, uh, you know, warming up my pew. And I, you know, that just made me angry when I left, especially if they were talking about, you know, things in the secular world, you know, uh, you know, abortion rights got to get passed, or this got okayed, or this got okayed. I, I would walk out just like, there wasn't, very much Bible discussion here or talk about God. And, and I was just like, I was so disillusioned. God brought me to this church. Praise God. And um, that was a big deal. I, you know, <clears throat> I'm 70 years old. I'm not, uh, you know, like young people like you guys. And I wish to God I had been like so blessed and I think you guys are so blessed, and I, I pray for you all the time, and that God will continue with working with you. But um, what am I trying to say? I don't want to ramble. I, my, my religious upbringing was uh, scant. And that word pops in my mind. Um, very minimal. But when I came here, it was like we're in the army. We're in the boot camp. We're talking about here. We're not just sitting on the edge and just kind of playing our games or, or sitting here and pretending, but we're worshiping God. And, and, it, and it's funny, this morning, Bible reading, 
I read this morning Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2, which says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will recount of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and will exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So, four times he's saying, I will, I will, I will. And we will worship God. We will we'll praise Him. And we're here to worship. We're not here to just, uh, you know, I mean, fellowship is wonderful. And we, and we love one another. But, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, um, Jacob and, and Isaac, um, they, would, they would build an altar. And then they would dig a well. And that well could, you know, you can look at it that two ways. They needed the water for the animals and stuff like that. But they needed a spiritual drink. They were thirsty. We're all thirsty here. We're all looking for things. We're all seeking. Um, you know, Zach was talking about, you know, perspective. And, and it's so important to have that perspective. Um, and God's given me that perspective I never had before. He's even improved my art my painting and stuff. It's, I, I can't explain it. I think he's guiding my hand. I, I, I watch movies and I, I'm like, God just, you know, made that guy do that to that other person. I, I just see God's involvement in all things. And at first I was very afraid of, you know, praying for people. I don't know these, these people. Uh, I, don't, I don't hear a calling like, come and pray for me. Um, but sometimes somebody would tell me something, and I would say, can I pray for you? And they'd say, yeah. So <clears throat> I would go over and pray for them. And I'll look on their face, and, and the feeling of comfort afterwards, I said, okay, I'll see you later. You know, I don't even know these people. Um, it, was, it was a blessing. And I, and I think, you know, we, we need to... With the way, the way the world's going now, we are at the end times. We, we are seeing things that are um, really different. I mean, like I said, I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, and I never envisioned any of this freedom, if you want to call it, uh, that we're experiencing now. But in actuality, everything is falling in place, uh, as the Bible says. We're, this is not some thing the government or you know Congress people or or you know these these fake religions are gonna explain and everybody's gonna be happy and we'll have some utopia. This is Jesus is coming back and 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 praise God. He said he was and he's going to fulfill everything. I mean he's blessed us all individually in this building. And we, we're so thankful of Bishop and, and his wife and, and all the Hart family and uh, all, the, all the, the elders here. It's just, I mean, where would we be without them? We'd be lost. So we have that, that grounding. And, and I, I just, I, I can't stress enough how, how we have to persevere and keep on pushing forward. Because this is a time that, People just want to give up and raise up and say, no, nah, I can't do anything. I'm just going to, you know, be comfortable, be comfortable in the flesh and just, um, and just see what happens. But greater things are happening and, and great things have happened in my life. I would never have done this. I was going to say at the beginning, Bishop emailed me and asked me to do this. And I'm like, I felt like saying, are you crazy? You know, I, I, uh, I'm not good in front of people talking in front of people. I, I have, uh, you know, I kind of wander off sometimes and, and say a lot of stuff that it's like, what's he talking about? But I, I prayed about it. I read a lot of things. And I just wanted to, um, I mean, you, you wouldn't have known me before. I was angry. I, had, I was angry at being angry. <laughs> now, go, go figure. And, and, and I didn't know, you know, duh, just pray, pray about it. Give it to God. No, no, I wasn't going to do that. I was going to do it myself. Because I grew up in the 70s. 
all the self-help books came out. Oh, man, you go to the, the bookstores, it'd be, you know, oh, you're okay, I'm okay, and, uh, you know, there'd be like thousands of them. Well, I would pick out what I thought was the best for me, Wayne Dyer, I don't, uh, the guy's still alive, I think, I, but he's probably in a nursing home or something, but um, nothing he really said solved anything. It was all like a, just a, a, a masquerade type of thing, just a, just a, a little band-aid on it. Never talked about God. And every time I read those books, I'm thinking, it was God's going to be involved in all of this because he created everything. But being a Catholic, we, didn't, we weren't brought up like that to, to understand God's, you know, his whole creation of all things and his, um, his lordship over all things. So, you know, the individual thing came in. And, you know, God wouldn't help you unless you help yourself. Well, I found that 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 wasn't true. God helps everybody who repents, number one, who wants to be baptized in Jesus' name, who wants to stop playing around, who wants to get serious about the whole thing and give worship to God and all glory to him where where he, he deserves it. There's no good in me, but... God, you know, blesses me, and I just, I thank him every day. So, I think I'm going to give it back to you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Gravielli. Praise God. Praise God. Let's just thank the Lord for what he's done in uh, Brother Gabrielli's life. Lord God, you're so good, Lord Jesus. You're so blessed, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've done in his life, dear Lord, and in the lives of so many others, dear God. It is our blessing, dear Lord, and it's our privilege to rejoice in that. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The title of my message is Grace To and Grace With. To and with. I was uh, reading um, so somewhere about January or February. I was uh, reading uh, the epistles by John, and um, they were they were good. And uh, then I moved though to uh, to Philemon, and then to Second Thessalonians, and I started to see that. And I started to wonder because there was a similarity between Philemon and Second Thessalonians, at least the way they started it and the way they ended. And they didn't have that same similarity with uh, the letters that John had written. And so I started wondering and uh, uh, looking into that. And um, the way they were similar was the way they began and the way they ended. And they ended differently from John. They began differently from John. Uh, each of John's, uh, well, First John is uh, ends and begins a little bit differently from Second and Third John. Second and Third John have a little bit more in common. Uh, but I started looking into that, and um, I'd like to uh, read Philemon right now. Philemon, uh, beginning with verse one. It starts off, Paul. He's the guy who wrote the letter, and that's how they wrote letters in those days, by starting off with the sender, a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy, our brother. Uh, Timothy, who had uh, worked with him, he's uh, described as uh, Paul's son in the gospel. Uh, Timothy was there with him at this time when uh, Paul was writing this uh, letter, probably from prison. And now we have the recipients. Unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. And to our beloved Apphia, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is grace to. Grace to. Grace to you. Grace to all those that he was writing to. Grace to all who would... Um, uh, read his letter. <coughs> uh, 
excuse me. <clears throat> in these letters that were written to the churches, we find that every one of these written by Paul says, grace to you. Grace to you, to the church at Rome, to the churches at Corinth, to the churches in Galatia, to the church at Ephesus, to the church at Colossae. Um, and then to Philemon, grace to you. There's a slight uh, difference when we look at uh, the uh, what we call the pastoral epistles. Pastoral because they were written to someone uh, giving them uh, pastoral advice. And those two men were uh, Timothy and Titus. And one more word is added. It says grace, mercy, and peace. So there's a common theme that um, we see continuing through all of Paul's letters uh, that we have available to us, all of the letters that were signed by Paul. And that is that there would be a blessing of grace and peace to the recipients of a letter. Now in... um, Uh, the very last verse of uh, Philemon, after he has uh, made his appeal to Philemon and asked him to accept this uh, runaway slave that belonged to Philemon, who had uh, turned to the Lord and uh, given his life and become a a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, he had asked him to accept him back. He ends this by saying, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. This is a grace from or I'm sorry, the grace with. (laughs) He started off with grace to, and he ends up with grace with. Grace be with you. And again, we see that this is a common way of closing his letters. Uh, Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, and continuing through all the letters that Paul wrote, he closes by saying, grace with you. There are two blessings. There's the initial blessing, And there's the final blessing. The initial blessing is grace and peace to you. And the final blessing is grace with you. Now, when uh, Paul wrote to the Colossians as he was uh, closing up uh, his letter to the Colossians, he encouraged them that this uh, letter would be read uh, not only in uh, the church to Colossae, but that also be shared with a nearby church that uh, uh, there was a lot in common uh, with them because of uh, the ministry uh, connection that Paul had with them. So he says, uh, when this epistle is read among you, cause that it also be read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the letter from Laodicea. At that time, in the ancient world, it was the common reading practice was to read aloud. Uh, reading silent was something which uh, developed later. And as a matter of fact, one of, uh, uh, one of the writers of uh, the late ancient period, maybe more into the Middle Ages, was surprised to witness somebody reading, but his lips weren't moving. And so he just kind of wondered about that and uh, he, it occurred enough to him, strange enough, that he, he commented on it uh, just to. And I, I, think, I think that's probably an experience that we all have is that we get taught, just read to yourself, you know. And uh, <laughs> uh, what uh, we see in uh, the book of Revelation, that there was a blessing that uh, John announced to uh, those who were received this letter. He says, blessed is the one who reads, and blessed are those who hear. There's one reader, and there are many listeners, because the letter was intended to be read aloud in a group. And so that's what Paul had in mind here when he's uh, telling the Colossians to let the letter be read from Laodicea and to share your letter so that it can be read amongst the Laodiceans. So if you can picture... Paul's not present. He might well be in prison. 
and he's sending a letter to these people that he has uh, somehow come in contact with, either his personal ministry to them or the ministry of somebody that he is uh, uh, connected with. And um, this letter comes to them, and now this is going to be read aloud in a, uh, a church meeting, maybe in a house group or um, uh, maybe in a hall, somewhere where they can gather together to read and uh, worship the Lord and to pray, sing psalms. And uh, so this letter is start to read, and it's as if Paul is being brought into their presence right then. He's virtually there with them, declaring what he has to say. He can't be there, but he's there. At times, uh, he, he, he tells a couple of churches, he said, uh, I'm not present with you, bodily speaking, but I'm there with you in my spirit. And uh, he was there in the reading of the words that he had dictated to someone to write down so that this letter could be sent. And so Paul is there, and so he's coming into their presence by the reading of this letter, and he is bringing a blessing to them. When he, he comes, he comes with a blessing. And then he remains there with them as the letter is being read, and his uh, exhortations and his uh, questions and his answers are being uh, presented to the, uh, to the listeners. <clears throat> and then he leaves when the reading is done. He's no longer virtually there with them. He is um, where he really is. So he comes in via the letter and he brings a blessing to the churches. And then he leaves, he signs off, and he leaves a blessing with the churches. Isn't that a beautiful picture? In a way, it kind of reminds us what um, Brother Gabriella was talking about, how the Lord had come into his life and he brought him a blessing. Praise God. You know, any time that you feel like the Lord is far off, go back to this thought that if you feel like he's left, he's left a blessing with you. Something's going to continue on and the Lord is going to continue working in your life. Even when you don't really maybe sense that he's there, even when you just maybe you're over, uh, overburdened by something that's um, working on your soul, something that's uh, weighing you down. He's still, he's still a blessing God. When God decided that he was going to come to us as a human race in bodily form, he brought blessing. He brought blessing to all those that he met. When Peter summed up the life of Jesus, he said he went about doing good. He brought blessing to people's lives. Sometimes it was healing. Sometimes it was, uh, it was teaching. Sometimes it was encouragement. Sometimes it was a challenge. But he brought them face to face with Almighty God. <clears throat> well, when Jesus uh, left, he left with a blessing. He told his disciples, he said, peace be with you. He said, I leave my peace with you. And um, it's not the kind of peace that the world has to offer you. It's not the Roman peace that um, uh, keeps those who want to do otherwise uh, in order. This is the peace that's within. This is the peace that you have with your creator. This is a peace which is going to give you an everlasting life with him. After his resurrection, he appeared to them again. And when he went into the room where they were, he said, peace to you. <clears throat> and just a few minutes later, he said it again, just to make sure. Peace to you. <clears throat> a week later, he met again with his disciples in a closed room. And um, he wasn't there. And then he was. And he addressed him. He said, peace to you. Jesus came with a blessing. And Jesus left with a blessing. He said that he left them with a promise that they could receive God's spirit in their lives. And that he would be with them wherever they went. When God's Spirit comes into our lives, it brings blessing. Praise God. 
And the beautiful thing is, is that even if we don't feel it, that he said he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. <clears throat> I think the Lord has um, been challenging us. And at least in this um, sermon this morning, especially, he's challenging us. That when we enter into a space, that we bring a blessing to that space. Amen. When we enter into a group of people, yeah. that we enter and there's blessing there present. Yeah. If we're coming in with God's spirit in our lives, it's like we don't even really have to plan it. We don't have to think about it. But God is there reaching out to the people around us. He's there trying to um, help them to see him more clearly. Help them to uh, perceive his presence here in this world and his drawing of himself to them. <clears throat> and so we come and we bring a blessing. It's a blessing too. And when we leave them, there's a blessing that we leave with them. Uh, one thing, uh, a beautiful testimony uh, that we heard um, within the last few months, I don't remember, remember when it was, but um, uh, Amber's job that she has, or she had then, I don't, I don't remember which one it was, Amber, but uh, anyway, she was, she, was, she, has, uh, she was at work, well, she wasn't at work, that was the point, she wasn't at work, there was some tension going on, and um, one of her co-workers said, I can't wait till Amber gets here. There's something special about Amber being there to work. And as special as Amber is, there was something that they probably couldn't maybe even put their finger on, even realize what was happening in their lives with Amber there. It's because Amber is there with the Spirit of God. Amber was there just, just being Amber and letting God be God. And that had a powerful impact on this co-worker and this desire for Amber to come into the presence because blessing would come when she came. <clears throat> One thing that um, experience that I grew up with happened frequently was that when we were visiting with somebody or somebody was visiting us in our family that I was growing up with, with as a boy, is that when it'd be time to, for us to leave or for them to leave, depending on who was at whose house, uh, my mother would often say, well, why don't we pray before we go? Or why don't we pray before you go? And we did. Praise God. There was a desire to leave a blessing. It was a desire for them to go with a blessing a desire that they would stay with a blessing. And we thank God for that. Praise God. <clears throat> well, when you go to prayer group this week, I'd like to ask you, are you going to take a blessing to prayer group? Praise God. And when you leave prayer group, are you going to leave, leave that prayer group with a blessing? Praise God. <clears throat> There's a certain part that we can play in that. And it has to do with just letting God help us to be the person that he wants us to be. Yeah. And there's a part that just God being there, he being the person that he will be. And uh, we've experienced this in our prayer groups. I've heard a number of people talk about it, how that they feel like there is blessing in their house after the prayer group has left. There's a difference. And it's a good difference. It's a beautiful difference. It's a life-changing difference. And um, people know that God has been in their presence on that night. When you come for celebration next week, will you come to bring a blessing? Praise God. You have the opportunity to come here uh, at 9.30 and just start offering thanks to God. Greeting one another, but not lingering to talk, but just letting the Lord be blessed. 
inviting his presence in here. Getting your mind accustomed to receiving and, and, and to uh, giving. Stopping to pray with someone. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing that takes place because it's a God thing. And then when you leave from celebration, you're going to leave a blessing here. Praise God. Praise God. Well, that's the message. Grace to and grace with. Praise God. He wants us to be carriers of blessing. He wants us to be, well, I don't know what the word is, but you know, when you, when you make a delivery, right, Dave? You leave the chips. You bring the chips, you leave the chips, right? Okay, so uh, deliver is a blessing and uh, drive away, my drive away with an empty truck, but that place where we left the, left the blessing, it's full. And uh, you can be wherever you need to be, prayer group, your personal devotion time, uh, celebration, and you can fill up that uh, vehicle again and be ready for another delivery. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like you to stand. And... Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just ask the Lord to help you to be that carrier of blessing and that one who leaves the blessing in your life. And, you know, maybe he'll give you ways to, uh, for that to happen, but uh, just trust him that it's going to happen. You ask, and he will, you will receive. You ask in faith, you receive what I, the, the best he can have. Let's, um, let's uh, ask the Lord uh, that petition right now. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that each one of us, dear Lord, that we'd be able, dear Lord, to take this um, message, Lord God, hallelujah, and we'd be able to experience it in our lives, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We ask, Lord God, that we would be the one who takes the blessing to, Lord God, and that we would be the one who would leave the blessing with, dear Lord. God, because you are in us, dear Jesus, and you are with us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, it's your presence which is going to do the work, Lord Jesus. We will do what you ask us to do, Lord God. Hallelujah. But even if we don't know, even if we're not really uh, totally conscious, dear Jesus, of every possibility and everything that could happen to Lord. You are working in ways that we don't understand and working ways beyond us, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, mighty Jesus, for your goodness. We thank you, mighty Jesus, for your blessing, dear Lord, which you brought to our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the way, dear Lord, that you've turned our lives around, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us peace, dear Lord, in uncertain times, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that you've given us, dear Lord, an assurance, dear Lord, and a satisfaction and the confidence that you are the one, dear Lord, hallelujah, who's going to do the work, dear Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, and we're going to give you the praise for this, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. God, we praise you, dear Lord, for using us, dear Jesus, hallelujah. God, when we don't even know what to do, dear Lord, you're going to use us, dear Jesus. When we don't even know, dear Lord, the direction to turn, dear Jesus, all we have to do is be there, dear Lord, and you are there with us, Lord God, hallelujah. We praise you for that, dear Lord, hallelujah. And we will go forward, expect Expecting the Lord and knowing the Lord that you've done a work to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.